In 2022, Daimler Truck was spun off from Mercedes-Benz to become the world's largest independent truck and bus manufacturer. This separation opened the door to creating a modern development environment, emphasizing developer experience and adopting a DevOps culture. So this next experience report is from Michael Vormitog, head of SAP Delivery, Architecture, Analytics in the CTO office of Daimler Truck, and he will be co-presenting with Marco Clemetti, CTO of EffiCode. They will describe a unified developer platform called the Truck Toolchain, or T3. This platform is designed to enhance developer experience and pave the way for future technical innovations, including Gen AI-based tooling. So they will describe the process of a massive separation of a business unit, including its R&D and developer tooling components, and lessons learned for any organization currently developing or enhancing their own developer platform. So here is Michael and Marco. We can see you just fine, and we can see your slides. Oh, fantastic. Hello. And we can hear you. Thank you. Super. Hello to everybody. So cool to be here. So today, my name is Marco Clementi, and, and today we're going to be talking about a story, how an organizational change leads to change in technology and how in hand technology then forces changes in the organization. And, and with me, I have... Yeah, my name is Michael or Michael in German, Michael Vormittag at Daimler Truck, and as Jean introduced us already. Just a very brief introduction into the company. So I'm the CTO of EffiCode. EffiCode is a global DevOps consultancy organization, 600 professionals, mostly uh, in Europe and US. Uh, we work together with roughly 16, 1,600 clients uh, worldwide doing things like as we speak today. And then Daimler Truck. Yeah, as also introduced, we are a commercial vehicle manufacturer, one of the biggest in the world. We have, even after the spin out uh, of the Daimler company and separating from our sister company, basically Mercedes-Benz, still over 100,000 employees worldwide. We produce in 45 production sites globally. Um, we have a history of a combined history of 127 years with our uh, ex-partners at Mercedes-Benz, basically, when we started inventing the first truck. At least that's what we claim. Um, and well, we are here in a way forging a new company, but still being a very old one. A lot of transformation is going on, and we will also be talking a lot about transformation. One thing we won't focus so much today is actually the whole zero emission transformation we're doing, uh, but I just listed it here uh, because it's definitely a, a big thing in our industry. So we are moving from the combustion engine to zero emission vehicles, being that battery electric vehicles hydrogen uh, vehicles, um, all sorts of different products in different markets. And we already have 10 of those in serious production. So a lot of change is happening uh, in a lot of countries. And um, today I wanna specifically look into how this change actually leads to change in technology, right? As Jean was saying, uh, Daimler Truck and Mercedes-Benz split into totally independent companies, right? And we were before a huge company of about 300,000 employees. We are still a huge company of about 100,000 employees, but we are separating all the functions. And as you can imagine, there is probably some things which are relatively easy to separate, right? So building a truck is done in a facility to build trucks, right? So if you split the companies, it's not so difficult because they have been building trucks all the time and the other facility has been building cars all the time. But everything what we do and what we're going to talk about is actually quite different, right? Because all the central functions, the, the ones which provide enterprise solutions for the organization, the ones which provide global tooling for the organization, they stayed with the old company. So we are currently in a kind of interesting uh, and unique opportunity to, to build all of that stuff anew, right? And of course, what happens is this means a lot of change, right? A lot of change, especially in IT, of how we can use this opportunity of this organizational change and then actually transform it in, in technology impact, technology change for the better, right? Using this, in a way, startup uh, opportunity in this large uh, in large ship, basically, to, to move it into a prominent and, and a productive future. So the question we want to talk about is how this organizational change can actually amplify a technology transformation. And 
I, I want to give you a target, right? So one of the dimensions we wanted to look into is how can we actually use this change to reduce our application landscape? Because as we are a big company um, and most big companies, which are long uh, term on the road, they tend to add applications and applications and we are big, right? You, you, I told you we have 45 sites. We had even more before. We have different regions, different countries. So there is applications all over the way. One of the targets we had in the company to use that organizational change and of course the limited or the more limited personnel we have and the um, and the new found opportunity to build new central structures, we said we want to cut down our application portfolio by 40% to be a leaner, more efficient organization. And we are already there, even though like we still have to, about a year or so to be kind of 100% separated from, uh, from Mercedes-Benz. We are already reaching these 40% and will probably overachieve, right? So there is a huge opportunity and, and we are very happy in, in hindsight to, to do this move of separating from our old parent company and really having a, a way more leaner and more consolidated and effective uh, application portfolio. One of the, um, the topics I would like to talk about today is especially the tools, um, the DevOps tool chain uh, landscape. In the past, we had a lot of tool chains, to be fair. I, I made it a bit abstract in our slides here, right? But just for you to understand, and I think a couple of you people who are in bigger organizations might, might understand and relate. I mean, you have big organizations. Our research and development organization in the past, it's thousands of people, right? So they decided we need a tool chain for my tooling to build things for the cars and the trucks. So already here we have different organizations. Then as this organization is thousands of people, they decided, well, maybe we need two different tool chains even because there's different things, something more cloud-based, something more on-premise based. So you end up in different tool chains. Then other organizational parts realized, hey, this is so customized what the guys over there in research and development did. And it's actually so far away in the organization that for example, I need to build my own Confluencer, right? So they built their own Atlassian stack and realized it works because it's maybe less um, customized. But then at some point, and I think a lot of people can also relate to this, at some point, the person who did it is actually leaving the company and then you end up having a more or less maintained uh, infrastructure with maybe no migration concept at some point if you realize, hey, maybe it makes sense to not have 50 different installations of the same tool going on, right? So all these things happened in the past and we had a variety of tool chains. We used the Daimler truck transformation as one of the opportunities to centralize the tool chain. Right? I'm not saying also we are 100% there, but what we are aiming for is to consolidate all this into one tool chain, which has a set of tools. It doesn't have all the tools uh, everyone requires. That's also a fact, but it tries to have the big ones in place that, that we build a foundation for whoever, no matter in which part of the organization is actually leveraging the right thing at a cost efficient and a manageable scale, right? And so we won't run into uh, the issue that you have something which is product, um, productive and relevant that you have only maintained so-so or you don't have really a feeling on how it's actually going into kind of uh, a migration if you need so, right? So so this is what we're currently doing. And looking forward, of course, uh, that's not the end, right? Because I mean, as you all know, it, it doesn't stick with exactly this tooling, even though some of them are maybe important, some of them will be long-term, but the tool landscape is, uh, landscape is changing, especially now if you think about AI, also um, a lot of tooling comes into place and the question has to be, what do we need to provide to our organization, right? So our vision is, well, be clear, be foundational, but also be dynamic, right? We need to adjust this. And this is this is not easy for a large company. I think also some of you people might relate. So that you, you build this paved road for the company, you build this foundation, and you, you build processes, how you actually interact with it, interchange tools, and make sure that, that everyone in the company has something they can use. Handing over to you. And as we've seen with Daimler, the lessons learned, that's something we've seen along the organizations working to build the future of software development, being the leaders in the market. Uh, there are four key areas that organizations need to pay attention to. 
And the first one, of course, is the business agility, where everything started here in Daimler. It was the carve out uh, from another business, but it could also be something you're going beyond safe in your organization. We already today had a presentation of the Spotify model. You might be going towards the stream aligned teams and, and using the team topologies, for example, to do that. The key of business agility is not only to think about your teams or the R&D, but aligning the whole organization to your value streams. And the second one, uh, I said consolidated tool chains, which started from the abundance of DevOps tools emerging for the last 15 years. And also the fact that the shadow IT has said there are like tools hidden in the organization that are maintained by someone and used by many, and you don't have an exact knowledge about this. But then also it includes the platform engineering. It, it includes building the developer experience, it, but it's not just limited there. It's, it's more than just that to build the consolidation in, in the tool chains and aligning it to your, your business strategies. The fourth one, the third one, which I today call DevOps Safety Net, because it gives kind of an idea of what it means. It's, it's, it's the healthy DevOps culture and extensive automation, as we already know, quality assurance, that security and for companies such as Daimler, building in the compliance into the automation and the continuous cycle. But it also ensures, it gives you the feeling of security that you're Im implementing new features. And as the fourth one, you're implementing, for example, AI-driven tooling or AI-driven development in your organization, you know that everything is still working as expected. And that's kind of the key into building an organization functioning and being fast when the value stream changes or there are changes in technology. We want to share a few words also about AI because it's a focal thing in everything that's happening. For Daimler, it started from the organizational change run by the change in, in the tool chains and consolidating that, but also all of the challenges that comes from how the market is changing. And I'm quite sure you don't know this, but punch cards, the ones that we fed to a computer back in the day, they were already invented in 1725 in Lyon, France. And they were used for a device called Loom, a device which weaves cloth. And it shows, it creates the pattern in the cloth. And punch cards in a way, they have been our way of using computer's language to tell the computers what the computer should be doing. But now with the emergence of the generative AI, and the AI tooling, well, such as GitHub's and GitLab's tooling that you, you would use on your daily basis, we already see that in the future looms a time when we use natural language, our language, to tell the computers what the computer should be doing. And Daimler, as a big organization, of course, will, will be seeing soon Adobe talking about the same topic more extensively. But in Daimler, it's also interesting how AI is put into place because it's such a big change and it's gradual in what's going to happen. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, our perspective here on, on the one hand is with the change of, um, of technology here. So we are, we are looking into AI-driven tooling. We will look into a, a variety of different things we need to consider, right? One of the, the, the main driver for me or the main changes I, I see here in this in this transition to agile, and then we are, we are looking here really in an, so we started with the org change and now we're looking in a tech change uh, to, to continue the cycle basically. So we're really looking into something which applies to way more people than before, right? So everyone who is developing code will be somewhat AI enhanced, but not only them, right? So also everyone who is doing any task in business is actually in the future AI enhanced. So if we think about the tooling and what we need, I think it's very important that larger companies think about how do we actually control this? How do we govern this? How do we set the right things in motion that we, we fulfill what we think makes sense for us, 
for both safety, but also compliance, security, and social or ethical behavior, right? And so that's why I believe every company like ours, and that's that's our approach moving forward, needs to at least build something like a minimal viable governance around AI. And I call it minimal viable because I know that companies like ours, and I'm also pretty sure a couple of people here can relate, if you talk governance, it's very easy to before on DevOps safety net, right? So big companies tend to build a very strong safety net yeah. and and that's a risk, right? So we want to be fast, especially if we talk DevOps, we want to have control, we want to be fast, we want to be productive, effective in what we do. So everything we need to do in, in these controls need to be, of course, somehow not too much, but also not too little, right? So for example, what we need to look into is well, how are use cases developed, right? So is there any ethical consideration I need to do on a use case? In many cases, maybe not, then it has to go smoothly through a system, but maybe in some, it has actually some implications, right? So, so those things have to be looked at. You also need to clear as a big company, I mean, I don't want you to use every AI tooling, right? Mm. I should know what it does, right? And and where it's trained from and and, and what's kind of, the behind the scenes on it, right? So I need to have some sort of central control over these things. And I need to check, okay, what is actually legal requirements in different regions, right? You, you can see, and, and we don't want to make it too extensive. You want to make just a, a small uh, kind of um, grasp of this, this challenge. What we have, we have a challenge to, to manage this organization, to manage the organization in a way that it can actually handle this transformation properly, right? And that's for us super critical and to balance kind of the what the organization has to do and what, what the tools actually can deliver. And then with this, we in a way close the cycle of, of, of these uh, three things we have here. We have the construct we build as a company around the AI. Um, but on top of this, it's, it's not only what we build around the AI, also the AI itself. And that's also a claim. That's why they call this section here, AI to development is like Asia at waterfall. It will change the organization, right? Yeah. So it's not just, I put a tool in place. It actually has to change the way we do development. Yeah, if I use an exaggerated example, I use very often is if your value stream is here and only 5% of that value stream is the actual software development that we today know is mostly impacted by AI tooling, and you improve the software development by 50%, you only do two and a half percent impact on your whole, whole value stream. Yeah, totally. And so, so we believe that, uh, and to, to close also the circle, we believe that this transformation will lead to a transformation in software development once on, on the governance side of a company, check, I talked about this, but also in the very, very way of how we do development as software engineers of and i don't think it has been explored yet so that's also an ask we, we have to the audience after right so i think it's a very interesting theme how is software development actually gonna be changed at scale are we will we be looking into i don't know uh, a manifesto of uh generative co-development on how we actually should build software in the future how the organization has to behave to be capable of dealing with this, how the roles have to be changed. Will there be, I don't know, um, AI refactoring, hardening sprints or documentation yeah, yeah. sprints or whatever? Or do we have a formal verification such as in aviation or in medical, <laughs> medical industry where you create formal verification and a program emerges from that? We don't know. And that's our ask for the audience as well starting the discussion yeah. from there. Yeah. And it's not even looking too far in the future because I think the reality is now for this, if you look in the future and we actually have certain functions which are provided automatically by an uh, LLM backend, then things will change again, right? But I mean, even now, I think uh, it's a super interesting topic to discuss. And I think we made it on point for yeah. 20 minutes. So it was a pleasure being here. Thanks for hosting us. <laughs> hey, fantastic. Uh, thank you, Michael and Marco.